a quick observation learns that men of the West have grown dull with wealth they don't feel they earned and fattened with food designed to keep us eating. We were not put here on this earth to uphold the power structures and the profit schemes that hold us captive. We feel compelled to do something greater than merely exist. What we need are new shoulders to stand on and greater giants to help us carry us farther. And as we are stuck in this information age and knowing that this age too will pass, then we are free. We are free to usher in a new great age, an age full of great works that lie before us. However, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, as formulated by the United Nations, don't seem to inspire anybody. These goals are so dull and so bland, they certainly do not compel any man to act. We deserve something better. Let us, therefore, command our own initiatives, 12 Herculean works, to be completed before the end of this century. Of course, we too care about the environment, and we too shall clean up the forests and the tundras and the oceans and the rivers up to the point where the Atlantic salmon will return to the River Rhine and swim upstream every summer to lay its eggs. But why stop there? Why stop at such simple household tasks? Haven't we got anything more exciting to do? To this end, I propose the Venus Regatta. We will sail around planet Venus in spaceships with sails so large they catch the solar winds, and we will blast ourselves there and back within 300 days. Just for the honor, there will be no prize won. And while we're in space, why not fly to Mars and establish there a university so that future generations of Martians can study Earth history and philosophy? And we shall name this university the Academy after Aristotle. We could fly a little further and start mining the asteroid belt that floats between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. And we will find there all of the resources needed to fuel our future aspirations. We can also deliver the breakthrough technology that turns nuclear fusion from a fantasy into a reality. And we shall reduce the size of these machines to make them fit as fusion engines to propel our spaceships to Saturn and beyond. But not everything we are going to do is science fiction. Back here on Earth, we realize that the cities we've built are the end of people. Those Molochs of concrete, steel, and glass are a detriment to human nature. We shall therefore commence the de-urbanization of the whole world, and we shall return the people to the land and the land to the people. We shall also abolish classroom education that requires children to sit still and be quiet and listen to what their liberal teacher tells them to believe. No, instead we will give them hands-on apprenticeships so that the children can be directly involved running around and speaking loudly in the development and the design of the new worlds that we shall envision together. Unbothered by fictions of equality, we realize that hierarchy is a necessity for the organization of human affairs. And we shall propel the best among us toward the most advanced fields to be our leaders. And instead of abolishing men or the male sex as feminists would have, we understand that both girls and boys need male leaders to lead them through the ages and that children should have the right to count on the support and the nurture of their mothers. Instead of abolishing faith altogether, we also understand that we cannot reach for the stars without making our God the center of the universe. We shall also cease to preach the gospel of global peace and complacency, and instead embrace the dogma of eternal struggle. For it is only by facing great struggles that we may win great conflicts and so advance ourselves. And that leaves me with one more great work to be accomplished, namely, to instill in all the peoples around this world that they are more than bodies in motion. 
and that we are spirits, not atoms.